Hi, welcome back. This is Rakesh Nai. Today we are going to learn about Greyback Normal Form. But before we start, a small information I'd like to say. As you know, we produce every video in two different languages. If you want to watch this video in Hindi, kindly follow the link given in the description. And if you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe and press the bell icon so that you will get regular updates from this channel. So, let us start. In our previous videos, we have seen what is the requirement of a normal form and apart from that, we have seen what is Chomsky's normal form. Today, we are going to learn about Greyback normal form. If the right hand side of all the production rules start with a terminal symbol, optionally followed by some variable is known as in Greyback normal form. It means the production of GNF will be in the form non-terminal derives a terminal followed by a number of non-terminal or non-terminal derived epsilon. It will look like this. If the capital letters are the non-terminals, then I can say a non-terminal derived first a terminal symbol followed by any number of non-terminal or a non-terminal can derive an epsilon. Basically, this normal form is given by Sela Greyback. We already have discussed Chomsky's normal form and now we are discussing Greyback normal form. And what is the need of one more normal form? We know that every context-free grammar is recognized by a push-down automata. And the first advantage is the stack alphabet of corresponding PDA can be obtained directly from the rules of the grammar. The second advantage is the production with the left recursion is completely eliminated. And the third advantage of having Greyback normal form is every context free grammar is essentially a language whose member are string of balanced parenthesis up to renaming of parenthesis. So these are the three advantages we are having by using a Greyback normal form. So let us try to see what are the steps that we are going to follow when we are going to convert a context-free grammar to its corresponding Greyback normal form. The first step is if the grammar contains null production or unit production, then we must eliminate it. And if the grammar is not in Chomsky's normal form, then first of all convert into Chomsky's normal form. The second step is rename all the non-terminals into some AI in some ascending order of I. What, what do you mean by this? We'll be able to understand while doing a prompt. The third one is if the production is in the form AI derives AJX where I and J are the subscripts of the variable A. Then in AI and AJ I must be less than J, but it should never be in greater than equal to relation. And the fourth step is if any left recursion appears, then we need to remove the left recursion and we need to convert it into Greyback normal. Now let us try to understand this with the help of an example. Now here is a grammar given S derived AA or A and A derived SS or the first step is, if at all in any grammar, null products or unit products are there, first of all eliminate it and if the grammar is not in Chomsky's normal form, convert it to Chomsky's normal form. So this grammar is already in Chomsky's normal form. You can see the right hand side contain two non-terminal or a single terminal. So it is in Chomsky's normal form. Directly we will go to the second step for renaming of non-terminal symbol by some AI in ascending order of I. So in this grammar, I am having two variables S and A. But I will start with the first production. I will take that particular production and I will rename S by A1 and A by A2. Then the production S derived AA or A and A derived SS 
or B can be written as A1 derives A2, A2 or A and A2 derives A1, A1 or B. One important thing to remember here is you must not choose the way you like. You must choose the way the variables are appearing in the production. As we have taken the first production, we will take the variables the order in which they are appearing. If some more variables are there, we will take all those production and name it like A1, A2, A3, A4 in this way. The next is step 3. If the production is the, in the form of AI derives AJX, then we must put it in the form I is less than J and it should never be in I is greater than equal to J. Now let us take the first production A1 derive A2, A2 or A. Now here 1 is I and 2 is J. Here I is less than J so we need not do anything because it is satisfying I is less than J condition. Now take the second one that is A2 derive A1, A1 or B. Here 2 is I and 1 is J. Here we can see that I is greater than J. So we need to make some adjustment here. So what adjustment we will do? We will substitute the production starting with AJ. So J is equal to 1. So instead of a1 will substitute the production which is starting with A1. So we are going to substitute this and we will get A2 derives A2, A2, A1 or A, A1 or B. It means in place of this A1 we are going to substitute the production starting with A1. Now our reduced grammar look like this. A1 derives A2, A2 or A. We need not do anything because I is less than J. And in the second production, A2 derives A2, A2, A1 or A, A1 or B. Here, look at the I and J. Here, equal to condition appear. It means there is a left recursion. So, we need to remove the left recursion. So, let us try to learn how to remove left recursion and we will be applying to this. So, this is our production. What we are going to do? If the production is in this form, A derives A alpha 1 or A alpha 2 or beta 1 or beta 2, there can be any number of alphas and any number of betas. Just for example, I have written it like this. You can see the variable on the left hand side supposed to be the first symbol on the right hand side. That is my A. Here A2 is A. A2, A1 is alpha, A, A1 is beta and B is beta. Now what we need to do? We need to write it in this form. A derives beta1 or beta2, then A derives beta1z or beta2z and for Z production we need to write Z derives alpha1 or alpha2 and Z derives alpha1z or alpha2z. So we need to write this particular production in this particular form. So we can have A derives beta 1 beta. So what is my beta? A, A1 or B. So I have written A2 derives A, A1 or B and A2 derives A, A1z or Bz. So these two productions are written in this form. Now for Z production you can write Z derives alpha 1 or alpha 2 and Z derives alpha 1Z or alpha 2Z. So alpha here is A2, A1. So Z derives A2, A1 and Z derives A2, A1, Z. So we need to substitute it in our grammar and it will look like this. Now the last step we need to write it in the form of Grayback normal form that is a variable derived terminal followed by a number of variables or variable derived epsilon. Here you can see A2 derives A1, B, A, A1Z and Bz. This is already there in Grayback normal form. Here you can see on the right hand side the first symbol is terminal symbol and followed by any number of variables or simply a terminal symbol is there. So this production is already there in Grayback normal form. So what we need to do? We need to convert the rest of it. Take the first one. A1 derives A2, A2 or A. 
Now, in place of this A2, if I want to substitute this, it will be in Grebeck normal form. So, it can be written as A, A1, A2, B, A2, A, A1, Z, A2, B, Z, A2 or A. So, in place of this A2, I have written A, A1, this A2, then B, A2, then A, A1, Z, A2, then B, Z, A2. So, in this way, we have written. So, the production with A1 is written in this form. So, we have written it here. The next production is this one. Z derived A2, A1. It is not in GNF form. So, the first symbol is A2. So, in place of A2, we will write this part. So, it can be written as Z derives A, A1, A1, B, A1, A, A1, Z, A1, B, Z, A1. And the second production, Z derives A2, A1, Z can be written as Z derives A, A1, A1, Z, B, A1, Z, A, A1, Z, A1, Z and B, Z, A1, Z. Now we will be going to write all these things here. So, we will be getting this particular grammar in which all the production are in the form V derives T V star or V derives epsilon. The first symbol is a terminal symbol followed by any number of variables or the first symbol itself is terminal and there is nothing else. So it is the required Grayback normal form. I hope you understood how to convert to Grayback normal form. In our next video we are going to see yet another example of GNF. See you then. Take care. Bye.